Thank you, Mariam, and good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here, and uh, Edgar, I really appreciate the opportunity and the invitation from Shell to share a little bit about our journey over the last 10 years or so at Coca-Cola to really transform the way that we think about water and its connection, its relevance to the resilience of our business, but also to the resilience of the communities in which we operate. So today I'm just gonna talk on three things, why we care about water, what we've been doing, and how we've been doing it. So let me share with you first a, a few numbers to give you some context on our business. A very global business, obviously, with people enjoying our beverages in over 200 countries around the world, but also at the same time, a very local business in terms of our operations, in terms of our approach, local bottling partners, local associates, local manufacturing, local distribution. We are very much part of the fabric of communities in every country where we do business. In the Philippines, actually, we've been honored to be part of society here for over 100 years. I know you just celebrated your centennial as well. Our first bottling plant in Asia was actually opened here in, in uh, 1912. Uh, sorry, yeah, 1912. Um, given that local nature of our business, we believe strongly that our business can only be as healthy as the local communities that we serve. And so as we grow our business, we seek to create shared value for both our business and those local communities. And to that end, we have selected three critical societal issues that also are critical to our business. And these three are where we're putting the bulk of our attention and our focus. We call them the three W's. So together with water, we're focused on women, which is about empowering women entrepreneurs throughout our value chain, Philippines being one of our global lead markets on this, and well-being as well, helping to improve the well-being of the world's growing population. So let's talk specifically about water, and there are many reasons why it's a priority, why it's a strategic business imperative for us. Uh, first comes the recognition that we are living in a water-stressed world, and that is true across developing countries, it's true in developed countries, and as we've heard today through the video, through the prior panels, that stress is growing, compounded by population growth, economic growth, and climate change, all of which is putting increased stress on our water supplies. That's obviously a concern for a company like ours, which is a beverage company, Water is the main ingredient in all of our beverages and essential to our manufacturing processes. It's safe to say that without water, we would not have a business at Coca-Cola. Water is obviously crucial to the health and resilience of the communities that we serve, central to almost every aspect of human activity, and sustains ecosystems everywhere. So in terms of the what we're doing, we have a strategy and a set of metrics that can be summarized in three R's this time. So reduce, recycle, and replenish. The first two are pretty straightforward. Reduce is about using water in our operations as efficiently as possible, and our global water use in terms of efficiency has improved 10 straight years in a row. In Southeast Asia, we've improved that ratio by 30% over the last 10 years and continuing to make progress. Recycle is about complying with our own very stringent wastewater treatment standards. Um, the, one, the one that uh, many people are very interested in is the replenish goal. And this is a neutrality concept by which we're seeking to replenish or give back to communities and nature every single drop of water that we use in our beverages in our production by 2020. So how are we doing so far? Well, so far we're about 68% replenished with projects in over 100 countries and I could talk at length on many of those projects, but what I thought I'd do instead is just highlight one from Thailand, uh, which is where I'm based. And it's a program that we call Ruk Nam, that in Thai means love water. Uh, we started this about 10 years ago, and it's helping communities across Thailand become more resilient, but also helping us achieve a positive water balance now. So that means that we're actually returning to nature and to communities more water than we use in our beverages and their production. So I'm gonna share with you a video about this farmer in Buriram province in the northeast of Thailand that faces some of the most severe and, and significant water scarcity challenges, particularly during the dry season. Um, and this really brings home um, at heart a story of resilience. So can we roll the video?
น้ํามีสําคัญเฉพาะพื้นที่เพราะชนบทสมากจะทําเกษตรกรรมอย่างปลูกข้าวเพราะว่าอาทีกันแรงประมาณ2ปีฝนนี้ปีหนึ่งมันสามารถจะเอาผลผลิตจากที่เราที่นาของเราได้อุยยืมอูสินเขากินนี้ก็เลยทําให้เป็นมีสินเพิ่มขึ้นปีต่อปีอย่างนี้นะครับมองเห็นแล้วว่ามันรุ่ยไปทางไหนนะครับสินสูงมากครับปิยดายังสมุนนะคะเป็นผู้จัดการกิจกรรมสร้างสารรค์สังคมของบริษัทกูฮาโคลาประเทศไทยค่ะคือพื้นที่เนี่ยน้ำเพียงพอเพราะฉะนั้นเนี่ยสาเหตุสำคัญคือการไม่มีที่กักเก็บน้ำเพียงพอนะคะเพื่อจะใช้ในยามทางหน้าหน้าที่น้ำไม่แรงและน้ำแรงนะคะก็เลยเกิดเป็นแก้มลิงตามแนวพระราชดำริความหมายแก้มลิงคือเมื่อหน้าฝนน้ำจะถลักเข้าแก้มทิศะเพราะช่วงหมดหน้าฝนช่วงตามทุ่งนาจะแห่งไปแต่แต่สักแกมเลงยังมีน้ำอยู่เพื่อให้เราใช้กันในการเกษตรนอกจากฤดูเก็บเกี่ยวเมื่อมีคลองมันมันมันอิ่มเลยครับเหมือนน้ำหัวมันล้นมาเลยครับครับมันชีวิตผมดีขึ้นชุมชนก็มีเมื่อมีคลองมีช่วงนานาเข้าได้ขาวเยอะแยะมีรายได้เพิ่มอีกมีทุกอย่างนะขับมีทุกอย่างกับเด็กไปนอกบ้านจะอยู่พักครับได้อยู่กับลูกได้อยู่กับเมียเพราะลูกอยากเรียนผมบอกพวกไม่มีที่ยาสุขนาไปทํางานโรงงานไปพวกจะทํานาไปเรื่อยๆใช้นี้เข้าไปเท่าที่มีโครงการเที่ยงดีมันเหมือนอะไรที่ทุกอย่างนะมีรายได้เพิ่มขึ้นชาวบ้านนะรอดจากนิสิตเมื่อลูกต้องการอยากจะจะจบนำมาสมัครจบไปเขาผมมีคิดว่าคนที่เคยรอนเดย์ยากจนนะจะสามารถส่งลูกเรียนได้ถึงประมาณนะี้ผมไม่มีอะไรที่ว่าจะตอบแทนทันนะครับแต่ผมขอทันยาวตอบแทนที่ท่านไหนชิดคิดใหม่ผมพยายามทำให้ที่สุดครับHad a, a beautiful line this morning when she said that resilience is what makes us human and what makes us heroes. And I think, to me, Namau and his community in the Northeast, um, I think those are heroes personified. Um, just with an eye on time, I, I want to come back to the third part that I promised to talk about, which is the how, how we do these programs. And the theme of collaboration has been talked about a lot today. A Coca-Cola, we have, um, and we refer to this as the Golden Triangle concept. Which is this partnership between business, government, and civil society? There's no way that we could possibly make a dent in the water challenges that we all face. Um, no single organization can do that alone. That's why we believe so strongly in this concept of collaboration and golden triangle partnership. Here on the screen are some of our international partners with whom we're honored to work with, and I know some of them are in the room today. Um, we also have a range of local partners that we work with. The u t o k a p a t Foundation in Thailand, um, with, with whom we do the program in the Northeast, uh, we've been working them for about 10 years now. Then you have organizations like the Red Cross, with whom we've been partnering for almost 100 years. So we we believe in areas of mutual interest and then going big, and going to scale with these types of programs. Um, let me close by by saying this: we understand and we realize that the reality of the global water challenge. Is serious, and the reality of those statistics that you saw this morning are very sobering indeed. But we, like you, Marianne, we are we are optimists. We believe that we can make a dent on these issues through partnership, through collaboration. But it cannot be business as usual. And today, whether you represent business as we do, whether you represent government, whether you represent civil society, it's incumbent upon all of us to step up. To scale up and to speak up and continue to do so on these issues. So, thank you very much. <laughs>